What is happening guys and gals, and especially the gals on this one? Joe Badger here, your money mentor, where we have deep pockets and short arms, and where I help you with my nearly 40 years of experience with investing, business, personal finance. So it turns out that there are a lot more of you women interested in the stock market and investing these days than ever before. I looked it up and there are many reasons for this. A couple of the bigger ones are that there are a lot more women business owners and a lot more women entrepreneurs. And they're making more money and they're looking for a place to park that money where it's gonna grow for them more than just in a savings account. Another reason is quite simply, there are a lot more women out there who are higher earners. They're making a lot more money and they want it to grow for them. Over time, they wanna be able to manage their own retirement account, account instead of just putting it into an employee's 401k. So we're going to cover a lot of things in this video. I'm making a part one and a part two because there's a lot to go into, including why I am uniquely qualified to teach you this information. Uh, one thing you can do is go back to one of my videos, which is investing one-on-one -on -one for beginners that covers a lot of the information but today we're actually going into a lot more details than that. I want you to like this video and also subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more coming and you do not want to miss out. So let's get started. We're going to delve in. We're going to dive into the information here and really get in, into the details about investing for women, women in the stock market. When I started investing in the stock market, I was in high school or right out of high school. And I started investing in stocks and mutual funds and different financial products. And I did this on my own. And I think this all came about because I grew up in a family environment where everyone was really good with money. And especially the women in my family. For some reason, I grew up in this unique environment where the women were especially good with money. This goes all the way back to my grandmother who used to manage the money and the accounting and the bookkeeping for my grandfather's business. He had a construction business and he had like 40 or 50 employees at certain times. And she used to do, she used to write all the checks, do all the accounting and bookkeeping. She actually used to lend money to people as well. So I remember that being a huge influence in our family. Uh, my family, per se, was we had over 11 people in the family, my brothers and sisters and my parents, and my mother always handled the finances, and she was very good at it. She started us with checking accounts when we, we were very young. She put our money into CDs and told us about them as they grew for our, as they, as they growed, as they grew for our uh, college funds. So money and women had always been a thing in our family. I have three sisters and I know at least two of them manage the money in their families today. And so that's really interesting. As far as I'm concerned, I've always managed the money and I've always invested my own money. A couple other things that brought this subject to my attention about women, women being more invested these days in the stock market or more interested in the stock market is a couple of things. One is a, a friend of mine, she, she's about my age, came into a, a big inheritance over like $4 million. And suddenly, and she hadn't really had a lot of money in her life, and suddenly she had an opinion on the capital gains tax, right? That's how it works. And she needed to know, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna manage this money? And she really needed to start to uh, uh, research and look into investing her money. Another friend of mine, and this is probably a common story, uh, her father her father passed away and left her mother multiple millions of dollars as well. And by the way, you don't have to be a multimillionaire to invest in the stock market. That's probably a myth. But in this case, and I'm sure this happens a lot, women tend to outlive men, and so they're left with money 
and they have to take care of those finances and manage those. So one way to do it is to learn about investing and know what to do, what not to do, how to properly invest your money without losing at all, because there is a lot of risk. So we're going to go into a lot of specifics. Like I said, this is part one of part two. So we're going to look into the stock market and investing, starting with an overall picture of the stock market and a little bit of history as well. In the long term, the stock market is a safe place to be. Your money is most likely going to grow, but there are risks. And if you look at a chart of the stock market from its from when it started all the way to now, it's always gone up. If you zoom in on different parts, you're going to see that it went up drastically, it went down drastically, and we've had periods where it's been really bad. But if you've been in the stock market over time, most likely it's going to be safe and you're going to make some money. But there is risk. And some people say that when you're in the stock market, really what you're doing is you're just managing your risk because there's always ups and downs coming. It doesn't always go up. In fact, there's an old expression in the stock market and it's no stock just goes to the moon. It doesn't just keep going up forever, no, how, no matter how good it's looking at any particular time and no matter what stock it is. So those are some things to keep in mind. But also the stock market and investments are where you're going to need to actually grow that money that you have in savings because right now we're getting 0% interest at this point in time, and it's really not going to go up anytime soon. Back in the, 70, in the 70s when I was a kid, my mom was putting our money that we've earned or we've, we've either earned it from little jobs or we got it as gifts for birthday parties and so on. And she would put that into savings and we were getting over 10% savings in the 70s and then she would put it, those into CDs and we were getting over 15% CDs. And I remember this very specifically. I just thought this was the way of the world. It just so happens that in the 70s, the economy was in a certain way that that's what we were earning back then. But that was so unusual. So you didn't have to put your money at risk because in savings, there was no losses. Whereas in the stock market, there can be losses. So you have to know that going in, you have to have a certain mindset. In fact, I have a completely different video just about the mindset of investing. It's worth checking out. But long term, you're going to be pretty good. If you're an employer at a larger company, most likely you're in a 401k. And a 401k basically is your way of being in the stock market. And they have someone managing that. So. That's an overall idea, an overall look into the market, and we're going to get into some more specifics even deeper now. A very important concept when you are investing your money in the stock market is the rule of 72. And this basically says that every seven years, you're going to basically double your initial investment. Now, there are a lot of different factors here, especially the interest rate involved, but it's kind of a nice little rule of thumb to keep in mind that if you are involved in the stock market and you put your initial money to be to grow over time, it's going to take approximately seven years for that to double. Now, I'm sure you've heard of stories or there are videos out there that say, oh, you know, invest in this one stock and become a multimillionaire overnight. Those are just, many of those are just scams. I'm sure there was a small percentage of actual um, overnight successes, but just be aware of that because this rule is very important. It's time honored and it's been around forever. And I know it's more math, but it's important to know this, that approximately every seven years your initial investment is going to double and once again that's why time is so important 
when you are investing your money and growing your wealth. This next thing is one of my favorite of all times. It is compound interest. Now, compound interest works for you in terms of saving, but when your savings aren't making any interest, it doesn't work at all. So compound interest really applies to the stock market and investing your money and growing your wealth. And basically what compound interest is, nature's most beautiful thing to investing, which is interest on top of interest or interest on top of your growth. For example, let's say you invested $10,000 and over a certain period of time, it grew into 15, into $20,000. Well, that growth, that extra five, 10, $15,000 that has grown is also earning interest, including your initial $10,000. So it's interest upon interest upon interest. And this is what creates amazing growth for your money over time. Once again, time is a crucial element when it comes to compound interest. This is an important concept to really understand is because they've done studies where someone started investing at age 20 with a, a very little bit of money and by age 60 it's grown into a phenomenal uh, nest egg and as long as they haven't touched it by the way that's another part of the whole equation but that nest egg has grown very big and if that same person took that same amount of money at age let's say 40 or not even, I'm sorry, not even that same amount of money, much more money at a much later period of time, let's say age 40, I'm just using an example. It turns out you you can, it's almost impossible to catch up all that time that you accumulated with that small investment 20 years earlier. So time is a crucial element, it's a part of compound interest. Also, it's very important that when you're putting your money into different investments, that you're not touching it. You're not constantly taking it out and putting it in, but you're allowing it to grow over time. And that is why you need to allocate, and we're gonna talk about this in the second video too, you need to allocate money for investing, money for saving, and some money you never touch because other monies you're going to need on a day-to-day -day basis for expenses and for life. But certain money that you put into the investing account is never touched at least that's the theory and that's how it grows over time especially with that magical thing called compound interest and this brings us to allocation so allocation is basically the dividing up of your money and creating a safety net for yourself so you're going to take the money that you have to invest, not your emergency, fu your emergency fund, not your daily expense money, and not all of your income, but money that you have allocated directly toward your investing that you do not want to touch once you put it into your investing account or your retirement account. And then you want to take that amount of money and divide it up into different sectors, different investments, many categories that you can divide your money up and this is to create an overall safety net so that not all of your investing money is in one place. Allocation is a very important concept and a lot of people stick to the 5% rule when it comes to allocating. So you have 5% of your investments in this stock, 5% in this mutual fund, this index fund, this other product so that you are um, diversified enough, you're allocated in a wide range of areas, especially not all in one sector or one stock or in one area. And that creates overall your safety net. I recommend that everyone, absolutely everyone, women, men have an emergency fund set up. Now, your emergency fund is going to be a safety net against risky investments. In other words, you're not going to have all of your money in investments. You're going to have a lot of money in cash, and that's going to be for emergencies, medical emergencies, house emergencies, emergencies that you don't even know what they're going to be. 
but they always come up. That's Murphy's Law. So you got to cover yourself. Now, how much should be in your emergency fund? I heard others say, let's start at $1,000. To me, that's super low, but that's a place to start. For other people, it's going to need to be $10,000. For me, I would think it would be at least minimum one year's of expenses. But even me personally, that doesn't make me feel good. Mine is several years of expenses. In fact, I have a certain amount of money in my investment account that's just cash. And that cash is never touched. It is my emergency fund in case my house blows up, in case a severe medical emergency happens, smaller things, dental work, um, you know, an appliance breaks, or let's say the car gets totaled and it's a non-insurance driver, whatever that emergency is, and I'm sure you can think of a lot more, uh, maybe it's a business emergency, you know, something goes crazy with your, your business and you need that cash. And if it's invested in the stock market and you can't get to that money because uh, right now it's showing a loss or a whole, or a whole bunch of different reasons, um, that's what that emergency fund is for and you do not touch it. Now, here's, here's the problem. If it gets too big, then that is cash or savings that is not put to work. There are financial advisors out there who will say, take all of your money and put it in the stock market and put it in your investments. I don't believe that. That's not my style of, of investing. And over the years, I get more and more conservative and I'm more and more toward capital preservation. In other words, I keep thinking of ways to not lose money even more than I used to. And that emergency fund is very important. For me, it needs to be very big and that'll depend on you and a lot of different reasons. But like I said, some people, it's a good idea if they're just starting out, they have a thousand bucks, but I think that's nothing because you can go through a thousand bucks in the blink of an eye. I would start at 10,000, make it 50,000. But also depending on your income, if you have a, a really high income and you wanna make that uh, emergency fund at least a year or two worth of income, look, look what happened with COVID and with this epidemic who some people were out of work for a year, two years, um, not quite two years yet, but some people were out of work for a long time and that's what the emergency fund is all about. So make sure you have that set up. And I think that is a very solid part of your overall investing scheme and mentality. Okay, that's part one of women and investing. And I hope all of this is making sense to you. I know there's a lot of information and a lot of different concepts to grasp. And we're gonna go even deeper and in more detail in video number two, including where I reveal the number one investment for you to start right now. I want you to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you like this material, because we have a lot more coming and you do not want to miss out. Also comment below because if you have any questions, I'm gonna do my best to make sure I answer them in the comments. And you can tell me exactly where, are, where you are in your stage of investing and saving. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you again soon. Joe Badger out.